thanks everyone for coming out um, to see this panel. We're truly sitting on a panel of... I love the matching shirts. <laughs> <laughs> Is that like a box weekend or something? <laughs> oh. Well, you're, you're throwing me off every time I ask. I'm like, is Sergey there? Just four of them. Um, so it's quite distracting. So, you know, I'll, I'll try to do the best I can. Um, so this, this panel is all around modernizing corporate actions, which is kind of a boring topic in itself. However, um, we recently partnered with all three of these firms right here to actually solve the corporate actions problem in a really interesting way which combined uh, a novel architecture around using AI, oracles, and blockchains to create a faster, more efficient way of solving the corporate actions problem. So a bit of the panel flow here is gonna be broken out into three parts. We'll talk a little bit about the challenge of, of corporate actions today. We'll talk about the solution, which was the initiative that I just described. And then we'll talk a little bit about where we go from here in the future. So to introduce you to who I'm sitting with right here at, at some of my panelists. So we have Stephanie LaRue from Euroclear. She's head of digital assets at Euroclear. Um, just to give you some data on Euroclear. So Euroclear is an international securities depository and settlement company. They hold in euros 40 trillion in assets under custody, and they settle transactions worth one trillion in euros, uh, quadrillion dollars, I said that correctly, annually. We also have Wiki Lau from SWIFT. She's a capital markets strategy director at SWIFT. Um, SWIFT is a global messaging system and financial transaction um, system. They connect over 11,000 banks, financial institutions in 200 plus countries. Um, they process about 50 million messages per day. And then last but not least, we have Franklin Templeton, who's vice president of digital assets at Frank, um, Andrew, Andrew Crawford at Franklin Templeton, who's vice president of digital assets. Franklin Templeton is a global investment asset manager that manages around 1.7 trillion in, in assets under management, and they operate in over 165 different countries. So just, just to set the, the problem statement here of, of corporate actions, um, corporate actions has been a persistent challenge in financial markets for, for many years now. Um, what makes the problem particularly critical to solve this now, um, especially as we move towards tokenized assets. So why is this really an interesting problem at this point in time? It's been talked about for a while now. And Maybe I'll start with Stephanie from the, the market in infrastructure view. Yeah. Hi, everyone. So I'm not sure, does everyone know what we are talking about when we are talking about corporate action? Corporate action is whatever happens in the life cycle of a security, should it be a bond, equity, something like this. You have different types of uh, corporate actions, very vanilla one, like a dividend or coupon, very everybody is familiar with. And you have some more exotic events and voluntary corporate actions. And uh, what is interesting is the fact that this is, uh, at least for the notification part, this is data, this is public data coming from the issuer, but this information has to be distributed and goes through whole the whole value chain till uh, the investors, the buy sides. And uh, the way we are doing that is by transferring by message this information from one entity to another one. And uh, when you are uh, a buy side at the end of the value chain, then you receive this information from uh, various participants. And uh, sometimes this information is not consistent. You have some discrepancies. The information which should be the same is not the same. Uh, sometimes you receive from one party, but not from another one. So you don't know which one is right. So it's a problem uh, for everybody in the chain, for the buy sides in particular, and this is uh, something which is of interest for us as a financial market infrastructure to solve industry problem for the, for, the, for the users of the infrastructure. But this is as well a problem for us as a, as a CSD, for the custodians and our participants. We are all uh, doing the same thing, meaning uh, receiving corporate action event, processing, validating the data, recreating and resending the data. This doesn't bring value. Uh, the value would be to have a 
golden source and have all the participants of the capital markets having access to the same golden source. And this is really the topic of what we have been uh, working together in the past, uh, past months. Yeah, and um, if I may, uh, I think cooperation, as Ryan mentioned, is not really a new challenge for the industry, it has been for the industry for many years, as yeah. Stephanie mentioned, that is because there are so many unstructured data need to flow into buy side to processing. You can imagine in the middle, there are so many timing issue and also data quality issue. Um, but we're talking about that for many years, then why we're talking about <coughs> now and why that getting more ur urgent and important for as of today? Um, I think there are some industry trends is really driving the needs for change. For example, the first one could be shortened sentiment cycle for security transactions. The shift in US for T plus one, and you also can see a lot of announcements in different countries. They want to move the security sentiment cycle from T plus two to T plus one. That one already pushing corporate action timeline shorter, and the industry is expecting faster and quicker turnaround for compassion processing. The other one is that you, we also can see a lot of regulatory push on transparency and standardization. For example, in EU, in the regulation SRD2, they are really adding compliance requirement for shareholder transparency. And we also see a lot of security market infrastructure. They are either updating or, or planning to update the corporate action data to ISO 2022. So all of this is meaning that the industry really want to hand into automation and standardization. The last point, and certainly not the, uh, the, the most important one, is the rise of digital asset. Uh, I'm sure that most of you in the room that uh, know how uh, have very f uh, more strong feeling uh, than I do that you, you can see the the, the, the high development in the digital asset, especially the real, real world asset that being tokenized. And then we see the needs that the real time data flow and better interoperability is really required when getting into cooperation uh, processing. And then, Andrew, how about from an uh, asset yeah. manager perspective? Yeah, so I'm probably, we're po probably more from the user perspective. Um, I think it was 2022 that BCG put out a report that I think by 2030, 16 trillion was going to be recorded on a blockchain mm -hmm. of financial assets. And um, yeah, we're now two years on. And you know, at some point, we've got to have this massive growth uh, spurt. One of the things that this has been holding us back, um, you know, we only offer a money market fund. Um, and that invests in US you know, treasuries and repos, the most liquid, you know, easy market to uh, record on chain when it's immutable. We've, been, we've really been held back by the inability to do this. So I think what this project's done and the way that you know, Chainlink have taken unstructured data, structured it and then put it in code so it can be used by everyone you know, synchronously, um, will now enable us to break out of just this limitation of only being able to offer money market funds and will now enable us to offer you know bonds and it's really more on the equities that's where we perceive the problem so i think from our perspective this enables us, us to get closer to people to invest into a diversified portfolio on chain um, at the moment you know you've got ourselves and um, you can buy money market funds and a few bonds, um, but that's about it. Uh, I think people, you know, to want to have some equities, they may want to have, you know, there's been a lot of talk about real world assets, getting access to private equity. I think let's just do some basic assets that people are familiar with. And this project, um, you know, is, is getting us closer. And I think this is one of the things that will enable, that'll tilt that, the, the growth of, um, you know, assets on a blockchain system um, that will enable us to get to where BCG you know, projected we would. So yeah, this is a big, big moment. Yeah, because um, Benji has been one of the most successful money market funds, I think probably 400 million. Most successful, because we've got the highest yield. Yeah. And that's well, how you measure <laughs> success. 
We're but, giving investors back more money. So that, that's, that's right. I suppose, that metric of success. Right. And, and I think what a lot of people don't realize is that when people send you money for Benji, you're taking that off chain to buy traditional treasuries, fixed income instruments. Correct. And what you've just described is you can't service those assets if they're on a blockchain without things like corporate actions. But they may be on the blockchain. We right. are looking at you know, having a master fund, which is the fund, and then we Got will it. tokenize each of the underlying, which we could only do if we have corporate actions. Right, right. Maybe a little leak there from uh, Andrew. Very, very exciting. OK. Um, thank you for all that and, and your thoughts on that. Now we're going to talk a little bit about um, the project we all successfully completed. I think internally we called it Project Calm. Credit to Angie Walker, Corporate Action Lifecycle Management. Um, but externally, I think it was just blockchains, AI, and oracles, and, and asset servicing. So really what we want to achieve in this is just a brief overview of, of some of the initiative's um, achievements. So just to give everyone some perspective, we tested corporate actions across six different European countries. Um, Euroclear was one of our primary sponsors, so we focused in the, the European region. Um, we integrated three major AI LLM models. So that was Claude AI, OpenAI, and Google Gemini. And we were taking, um, as, as Wiki was talking about, unstructured data just like this. So, so this paper right here, it's, it's just paragraphs. But there's critical data in this piece of paper that needs to be structured that makes sense to all the market participants. And you can use AI to ask this document certain questions, like who are the panelists on this panel right now? And that can be returned and then compared against other AI LLM models. So we were able to successfully achieve that. And I think some of the asset managers in the pilot were calling it a farm to table data, where you're using automation to take data from human readable documents and put them into machine readable blockchains. And we achieved some, some unified golden records um, on blockchains. So just some targeted questions um, to our panelists, and, and the first one is to you, Stephanie. This, this concept of uh, a unified golden record is, is central to the solution. How does this transform the relationship of market infrastructures and participants? Okay. Ryan, I'm going to answer this question, but I will first answer another one that you haven't asked. Uh, just to go back uh, to, to why we have participated in this panel and why it is interesting. So building on what you said, where you say, okay, we need corporate action chain when we are building a digital assets product, and that's for sure. But for the moment, this volume is uh, still limited. Uh, and uh, uh, what I like with this project and this approach and this topic is we are actually uh, addressing a pain point for the industry for traditional assets, uh, which is and the opportunity for the market is huge. Uh, there has been a study very recent uh, by the value exchange. It's several millions per year for each institution, so meaning globally it's a really big amount. And we are also working a step forward uh, to run more efficiencies for the digital assets uh, adoption. So it's technology as an enabler to bring efficiencies in capital market and, re and solving real payments, which means it has a real chance to be uh, to go to the next stage of adoption, production, and scale, which is super super interesting to us. Then another thing, we at the end we have tested a workflow, which is a workflow using AI to create the golden record. Uh, that wasn't the first idea of design. Uh, we had, uh, and you remember that, we had several iterations between us, but with, as well, the different participants of, uh, of the project. Uh, and at the beginning, we were saying maybe we can use a Swift message as an input, or we can use other type of structured data. And having this kind of co-creation with the market, saying what is the best uh, usage or the best setup and the best workflow that we can uh, 
designed together to create uh, this golden record, and we ended up with uh, LLM model. And, uh, and then the question was about uh, the accuracy and the trust that we can uh, have in the data which is created in this golden record. If you are using only one LLM model, the fact that we have several of them and we need to make sure they all agree together, we increase the, the, the trust that we can uh, have in that, uh, uh, in that data. Because at the end, if we use that data to transfer money, it's a lot of money and real money. So we need to make sure that as an industry, we are, we, we are trust in the data. So that was uh, just, I wanted to go back to that. Uh, and then the question was around unified. Uh, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay, unified golden record. Uh, so I, at first, I like a lot the name of unified because uh, we, I, I guess you know that in the capital markets in particular, we, are, uh, we have been building a lot of uh, uh, DLT platform and there are a lot of them interoperating, etc. And we are now shifting towards a notion of unified uh, ledger, uh, which is very popular these days. And uh, uh, the concept of unified golden record is really for me the fact that we have created this record, this data, this data which is trustable and can be used, and then which is distributed across uh, the industry, across the various uh, blockchains. And how do you make sure that you? you keep the integrity of the data uh, through all the all, all its life cycle. So for us, it's super interesting to have a unified golden data and to reorganize an econ uh, uh, capital market structure, which is today very sequential and which can become reorganized and having all access to the same uh, golden record in blockchain. So that's a big, uh, big value. And it will uh, in in indeed remove inefficiencies, remove need of reconciliations, and then enable us to, to, to process quicker and, and go to the T plus one or whatever for even T zero for your digital assets. Yeah, thanks, Stephanie. And I think um, this pilot that we did wasn't just about getting data on chain. It was also distributing it across yeah. different blockchain ecosystems. We had three different blockchain partners actually in this pilot with us. And broad access has been a, a key theme to this as everyone in different jurisdictions, asset managers, market infrastructures, all have different preference to the types of blockchains they use. So that, that was another key theme um, of the project. Uh, Wiki, I'll, I'll, I'll hand it off to you to talk us a little bit around standards and, and swift messaging, yeah. right? So yeah. it's great that we can get unified golden records on a blockchain, yeah. however, Andrew's uh, teams and all the asset managers, they have those systems yes. that need to get, the, get that data. So talk a little bit about how can we connect sure. blockchains to existing systems. I think the beauty of this project is AI and DLT. Um, with that combination, it's not just addressing the old challenges in cooperation, for example, to reduce errors or cutting costs. But meanwhile, we started thinking about how we can get into a more integrated and digital financial world, for example, digital asset. So we put that together. Um, so from SWIFT perspective, it's really about three things, the data standards, market practice, and also interoperability. So for cooperation data standards and market practice, it's really not a new concept for the industry. It has been well discussed and agreed among a lot of FIs um, for many years, but having standards doesn't equal to you have structured data, right? So, for example, if the original announcement is really in paper, such as PDF, which is very typical unstructured data. So, it means that you, you need to have someone to read that paper and then manually turn that into a structured format although that could be pre-agreed by SMPG or by participants. So you can see that AI can really bring a lot of value <coughs> that from unstructured to structure. But meanwhile, I think the key uh, component to be successful solution of AI is that we need to train the AI model to understand better and fully understand how uh, a standard data looks like. Uh, uh, which can be uh, uh, consistent and, and, and based on the well-established market practice. So, so in that way, I think 
the data standard can bring value to train the AI models and make sure that they follow the right logic and to make sure the unstructured, when, when unstructured data turn into structured data, it's really something that the industry is looking for. The other angle is about blockchain. And then we can see that more and more institutions, they get into tokenized assets or real world assets. So you can imagine, as Andrew mentioned, that maybe it's a money market fund, maybe it's an equities or, or tokenized securities that the, the, the issuer, they need to announce their cooperation events and how this cooperation event as a golden source can be both distributed back to end in your existing system, but meanwhile, post the update to the blockchain. I think that is where interoperability comes into place. That it's not just Swift can do that. It basically, we need collaborations with uh, Franklin, Timpton, Euclid, and Chailing to make that happen. Yeah. Thank you, and then finally, Andrew, and I, I think you may have already alluded to this, what, what kind of excites you the, the most about getting the real-time corporate actions data on chain? It sounds like you want to put all 16 trillion of, of uh, the <laughs> BCG. Well, we'd like, I uh, mean, I think, yeah, we're, I mean, we had a panel this morning, and I think yeah, we got into this for the cost reductions and the efficiencies. Um, and, you know, we, we manage about 66 billion in money market funds across the group. Um, that leaves another 1.634 trillion that we would like to move on chain. Um, but there's been impediments. So this, for what excites me is that this means we can start to move more of the assets because we, we we've acquired a number of asset managers over the last 10 years. So we pretty much across the efficient frontier have managers in every asset class and strategy. Um, so we would like to be able to offer those. And I think, you know, what I was saying this morning that you know we can really go to a much wider audience with using ch on chain, um, and you know we think we're good at what we do, and we would like to give more people access to that. Um, you know I think that blockchain will you know systems will enable us to do that, um, and I think you know having this unstructured data, you know it's the same same problem we have um, in our with multiple ledgers. You've got multiple providers. You've got Bloomberg publishing theirs. You might have Reuters. Right. They have a different structure. They have a different way of writing it. Um, to structure that data and to put that in a unified golden source and then to have that in JSON um, so it's programmable is a huge advantage, whether it's to identify investment opportunities. You know, most There's a large group of managers who run quantitative systems, now they can run qualitative systems. Um, you know, and one of the problems you've always got with a quantitative system is you're, you're ignoring the qualitative um, because that, there's not structured data. So I think there's a, there's a whole world of opportunities. And I think this also, you know, as people want more out of their investments, you know, whether that's around sort of values around ESG, that sort of information can be extracted you know, um, from this corporate event you know, the corporate actions that they, you know, because you, as a listed company, you have to provide certain information, good and bad, and that some of that may flow through to, you know, this, this company's got a lower score in ESG than you thought. I want to move my company. I might have a criteria where I say I only want someone who's 90, a score of 90 on ESG, and there might be a corporate event that pulls them down, and that might, you might say, I don't want them in my portfolio. So. I think, you know, and this is where you guys with the Oracle, you can, this can go out to so many different places because I think what we're going to see with this preponderance of information is that there's going to be so many uses, and that's the great thing about the public chain, there's someone that's going to come up with a creative idea to use this information that'll help people make decisions that are more aligned to their goals and their values. Yeah, I think, I think the ESG component is, is really interesting, Yeah. right? Because... Um, there's this idea of greenwashing where I can issue a security that I can tell my investors, hey, I'd like to improve my factory. It's a dirty factory. I want to make it a green factory. But I can take those proceeds and buy a bunch of exotic cars and no one would know otherwise. Yep. But with transparency, with oracles, with data, um, the security is just a data container. It's a smart contract. And CO2 emissions is something you can get from the real world. Hmm. Imagine a world where investors get that level of transparency. 
actually and you can validate. Answer. You've got you may have one source coming right. to your oracle, which is from a, a, a running a meter in a you know forest right. or something, right. and you may have something in the report that says we're generating hundred, and the reality is that you've got another oracle that says they're generating hundred and twenty, right. and that can create an event. Right. Do Do you see the you know there's been the asset management industry, we did a, a panel earlier on this. It, it seems like active management was the thing up until it was passive indexing. Yep. And what you've described is a world where investors have ultimate flexibility and customization. And the only way to do that is to have an open platform where the data is accessible so someone has transparency to make those changes. Is that what you see? And it's valid data. And valid data, right. Yes, I mean, you know, when most people go and do financial, get financial advice, they ask you financial questions. Right. They don't say, what do you feel about these issues? Are these issues important to you? You know, um, because they don't have any way of collating and collecting and mo monitoring that information. With this type of um, data available and through an oracle, you can, make sure that your investments match the criteria beyond the financial goals. You'll have lifestyle goals or you might have you know, value goals. Right. So you can ensure that your portfolio satisfies all those. Um, and you know, what you guys are doing can bring that all into that, um, that criteria to assess that you are actually on track to, you know, we just have quantitative goals. I want to get $100,000. Right. Know, I want to get $100,000, but I don't want any of these issues to come up and I want to have, you know, rewards or whatever it may be. The whole thing becomes interlinked. And, you know, it's the core of decentralization. You know, you're, you're acting as the intermediary of the information. You don't have to go to someone to get it. Right. So, yes, yeah, it's, it's, this is huge. Right. Hmm. Uh, fi final question. Um, you know, we've, we've identified, you know, several key areas for, for future development. Maybe I'll go left or right. Um, outside of connecting to Andrew's uh, goal of getting 16 trillion on train uh, for, for our initiative, um, where do you see some of the next steps with project, uh, our project uh, most critical in the next phase? Uh, so in my, uh, in my point of view, what is interesting is really the pass, how, how to have a pass to production for that. There are a lot of, uh, since the, the report is out, to be honest, I got a lot of uh, very good feedback from different uh, participants. Uh, even from issuers themselves saying, but I uh, would be super interested if I can bring this value to my investors. Uh, and, and they were even saying AI uh, is interesting, but I'm also okay to input the data myself if, I have, if I'm sure that it can, it can uh, then be distributed till the, uh, till the end investors. So we can see that really this is addressing again a real pain point for the industry today. Uh, and uh, we, we need to continue to work uh, with you and with uh, the, the participants and the capital markets participants to see uh, what is the quickest path to production because we will not solve all the issues and all the corporate action types at once, but uh, I believe that uh, we can uh, deliver value quickly. Yeah, I would say two things. One is that uh, we start with some simple cooperation events and possibly we should try something more difficult, more complicated cooperation events and especially, for example, whether we can enrich with reference data, we can provide additional actionable insight together with AI power and then to make the cooperation notification more powerful. Actionable. The, uh, the other part is really about is an idea that using AI and DAT, how we can make that to be a real business case, uh, which means that we need to consider system integration and market adoption. I think that two is really go hand in hand. Um, for system in integration, I would say that we really need to make sure that will be easy and cost effective and people can leverage their existing infrastructure for the new service. I think that's, that would be something we can look at as next step. And maybe before, uh, Andrew, I leave uh, the final word to you, but just to add, uh, on some points, we, you mentioned it already, the work with SMPG or other market association, but uh, we ha it's good to have a golden record, but we need to make sure it's a, it's a market standard, it can cover everything, and so all this work and discussion with the market association, should it be on corporate action, but if we go on to other uh, type of data with other type of market in the association, I think it's super key in terms of collaboration as well. Final word, Andrew, Final word. zero on the <laughs> clock. I, I just think um, 
uh, having a sort of mathematics background, the idea of taking unstructured data and putting it in a structured format that's readily available um, to multiple sources um, is a big leap. That's, uh, I suppose, my thing. And I think I, I have no idea where it'll be used. I mean, I know where we'd use it. I know there'll be a lot of fund managers who will you know, be able to do qualitative screening, um, you know, because they, they, they're a bit blindsided at the moment, you know, because it's very hard for a human to go through 500 annual reports. It's much easier for, you know, some code to do that. Um, and, you know, I think this is going to open up a whole new field. So, yeah, hats off to you guys for doing it. Oh, well, we're part of it too. <laughs> <laughs> well, we appreciate that. Um, thanks for coming to the panel. Um, we are going to be moving this project on to phase two, so we're really excited to announce that with some of the folks here, um, as well as other market participants. We had a great, as Stephanie said, folks running up to us at Cybos saying they read the report, they want to be in for phase two, so we're, we're really excited about that. Awesome. Thanks for coming. Thank you. Thank you.